And uh, but you come once every year or two with a book. Yes. And, and today is book day, a brand new yes. book. We get to introduce to you the paradigm. Yes. Rabbi, your first book, the first great book. You, I don't know if you've written other books before, but Not I know the, the book I knew is that, that was the, first the Harbinger. The Harbinger. Yeah, that was the first book I ever wrote. It was a humdinger. Mm-hmm. Everybody would pray to God. Their first book would be the New York Times bestseller for two years. What does the paradigm mean? What does this title mean? You see, mine's kind of marked up, but I, I want you to, sh- let's dig into this and give me an overview mm-hmm. of the paradigm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, now when I was here the last time, yes. this just started coming to me and I started to share some things that were coming, but it ends up, that was the tip of the iceberg. There's mm-hmm. so much that happened since. And then I wrote it in May, April, May. It, right. it, went, to the, it right. went to the editor and it's already gonna be on the shelf now. Um, but this is, this is, I would say this, you know, um, this is the most explosive book I've ever written. Wow. This is most like the Harbinger. In fact, it's another dimension of the Harbinger. The Harbinger is one dimension. Oh. This is the other dimension. Oh. And yet it's so explosive that I almost was reluctant to do this, but I knew I had to do this. You know, so uh, the paradigm is, I would put it this way, what if there was a, a master blueprint behind everything that is happening now? If, it, if this master blueprint existed from ancient times, from yes. God, from almost 3,000 years ago, could this blueprint contain the rise and fall of leaders that are happening right now, not only revealing what's happening right now, but actually the people that are happening right now that are on the world stage, could events that took place almost 3,000 years ago in the Bible, could they actually be determining events that are happening right now in our lives that have affected all of our lives? The, the, could it not only reveal what is going to happen or what has happened, what is happening, but also give the timing of when these things happen? Yes, at some cases, pinpointing the year of the event, some cases Whoa. pinpointing the month, the week, and in some cases, even the dates. Now, when I was here, there was nothing of that before. No. This is all in there. Wow. The dates. Um, you know, could it give the timing of when world leaders, are, uh, presidents, are allotted to be on the, on the national stage and yeah. then they have to go? Could it, of, of each of the world leaders, could it all Ooh. be replaying? It's kind of like if the, if the harbinger, the harbinger is the, gives the signs of judgment. And you, know, you, have, you have the tree, you have the stone, you have the, and the, but the paradigm is saying that the whole thing we're living in right now is a harbinger. It says at the time we're living it, is the harbinger. Oh, I believe The news it. events are, a, are part of the harbinger. And we are replaying something that happened, that happened in the Bible two and a half thousand years ago mm-hmm. that God, I believe, is using. Now, the word, the word to show us, to warn us, this is a paradigm of judgment, of warning, of a nation heading away from God and, and rapidly heading away from God. And what happens? And it goes from what, what we have seen, what, where we are right now, and then there's, of course, there's a whole chapter on the future about wh- what does this reveal about the future. Um, one of the things here is that it, wow. it's, it's um, th- this is basically, it's, it's as if God is, has given us a master blueprint. And it's something that, even though this, this kind of dovetails with the harbinger, because it's, it's from the same time, from the same thing. Now, what is a paradigm? Paradigm, you know, people use it all the time, and they, a lot of people don't know what it means. Right. Paradigm means uh, an archetype, a, a, like a model, like a symbol. Now, in the Bible, it's filled with paradigms. You know, when, when Moses sees, uh, is given a paradigm or the pattern to, to build the tabernacle, David's given the paradigm or the pattern of the temple. Prophets use, par- God used pr- paradigms all the time. When, when Jeremiah smash, smashes that vessel and says this, this smashing of this, j- this jar is representing, the, is, is a foreshadow of Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. That was a paradigm, a symbol, a model. God uses it all the time. And in fact, in fact, Paul in Corinthians, he says that these things in the Old Testament happened, and he's actually talking about the fall of Israel, the apostasy of ancient Israel, that this happened as an example for us. But the word in, in the Greek is tupos, which one of the translations means is paradigm. This happened as a paradigm. So what happened, what, what happened in the Old Testament, God it uses it, it says, for, our, for us to see it. 
But so what happened in ancient Israel, the falling away, is what's happening in America right now. It's what's happening in the world right now. But America is like the, is like the center of it. So the harbinger was part of it. You're seeing what happened back then is replaying now. But it's not just objects. It's not just a tree and a stone. It's, it's every leader that we've had. It's the events of our lives. Our lives have been affected by all these things. So that is what the paradigm is going to open up. That, that's that's a nutshell. This is, wow. This is this exciting. Is, that's <laughs> powerful. I, I am so excited because the harbinger doesn't stop. No. Every time you not come, stopped. there's another piece of the it harbinger. Yeah. So the paradigm is the blueprint it's a whole, it's the for other what's dimension. coming it's now. It's the other dimension of, of, what, of all this. It's the other dimension. It's saying that it's everywhere. Everything is part of this thing. Everything we've lived is part of this. Yes. So... Uh, I can set the stage, yeah. you know, and that, now the, the stage is the big picture. Then we can get to, but it's going to get so exact. In some cases, it's even going to give the parameters of the name of the person. In, is in Trump in here? Yes, Speaking he, of names. Trump is in here. Trump is definitely in here. In fact, I would say that that's one of the things that triggered this because we were there, you know, we were there in Washington, you know, yes. and it was soon, at, it, was, it was right at, at that time and right after that it all kind of hit together because some of these things that we're talking about, when you talk to Christians, I won't, I won't say what yet because it's so explosive, you know it. We, again, the only place, in fact, the only place I began to share when it was first coming was here. I was, that was when it was beginning. And the thing is that, but when I talked to believers, they said, yeah, I always had a sense that this person was this. You know, but, but they, I said, it's not just this person, it's the whole thing. It's part of this whole thing. So yes, Trump is in here, <laughs> everybody's in here, virtually. Um, and so, so the big picture, the first picture is the big picture. The big picture is, what happened to Israel? Israel is a nation that knew God. God founded it. God blessed it. But in their blessings, they start turning away from God, especially the northern kingdom. Now, the center of the harbinger is the northern kingdom, if you remember. That's where it took place. The northern kingdom is where this, the paradigm, takes place. What happens is they start moving away from God, and they start moving to idolatry. Now, today, people will never say, will never say America worships idols. We'll never say that. We have American idol, but they will not say that. But we are replaying the thing. What happened in ancient Israel, mm -hmm. they changed their God. That's the first thing. They started confusing God with, a, with an idol. They made a golden calf and said, this is the God who took you out of Egypt. So they start falling away from God. They don't even realize it's not God anymore. They want a God they can touch, an idol. And when that, what happens when that happens is they start turning into, instead of worshiping the invisible God, they're worshiping, they're worshiping a thing. So that the culture starts becoming materialistic. It starts becoming carnal. And once you can make an idol, what you're saying is if you can make your God, you're saying you can make your truth. So now you can start changing truth. You can start calling evil good. You can start calling good evil. So that's the next part that's happening in ancient Israel. And so then, and so if, first of all, just blow, stop right now for a second. What has happened in America and the West is we are reliving the big picture. The big picture is that, that we knew God. The culture was based on God. Now it's been a, a, a slow, first it was a slow turning. In the, in the, when we were born or, or in the mid of the mid late 20, 20th century, America starts turning away. And the West starts turning away too. They start turning away, start driving God out, just like Israel did. Starts driving God out, starts redefining things, starts saying we have a new truth, starts becoming more and more carnal, more and more materialistic. And so, but the next part is they have a particular God in this paradigm of Israel. The figure of God is called Baal, or we know him as Baal. Now, what, oh. what was involved with Baal? Well, one of the things about Baal, when they're worshiping Baal, Baal is a horrible, disgusting God, but this is the substitute God. So when they turn away from God that they knew, they turn, away, they turn to Baal. That's what happens when a nation turns away from the God of Israel. They turn to Baal in some way. Baal. Well, what was Baal? Well, he was carnal. He promised them prosperity. They, they, he promised them, them uh, you know, sensuality. And in his worship, they actually had, what they had is they actually had, they took sexuality out of marriage and they brought it into the public, the public culture. They actually had, they had sac what they called sacred sex. In the temple, they would have a priest and a priestess is having basically relations. And this, this was, it would call the sacred prostitutes. So what, what the next part of the, of the fall is that the culture, as they turn away from God, they start turning to sexual immorality. Well, Look around. Look at what's happening now. The next sign of the fall, immorality. And then you have the next part of the fall. 
Then this is just the big picture. Then we're going to get, it's going to get specific and, and name names and all that. The next part is that it goes from that. What else was the worship of Baal? It was the offering up of children. It was the offering up, it was the sacrificing of children. Yeah. Why? Because Baal promised them, if you offer up your children, you will, your life will be more blessed. You will have increase. You will, the children are going to weigh you down. So here, so they were inconvenienced. So they worship, they actually started offering up their children on the altar. They had this big, they had big bronze altar with a bull head on it. And they would place their children on the altar, uh, on, in the hands of the idol. And below it would be the fires. And they would, they would basically, oh, they would basically put their children. The Bible speaks about them pass, having their children pass through the fires. So the next stage is they start now offering up their children. And so, so here we have this whole progression happening. And so that's exactly what's in America and the West. You know the first union, actually the first, the first nation to have, to have abortion. You know what the first nation was? The Soviet Union. Because the Soviet no. Union was the first nation to normalize abortion back, in, I think, in the 30s. The reason was when you turn away from God, all of a sudden there's no more value to life. Well, America, when America was embracing the sexual revolution, the all immorality, that is the same time that it, it legalized abortion. So now we've killed 60 million children. This is all bail. This is the, this is, we followed the exact pattern of bail. So that's where we are. Now that's the big picture. But now what's going to happen with the paradigm? That's the big picture. But what's going to happen with the paradigm is it's going to start getting very, very specific. And so here we are. In, in, Israel's, in Israel's fall, there was a special period. I call it, spe it's really a specific period, where the fall accelerates, accelerates. Now where, where you're going to have kings that are actually going to totally champion Baal. And, you know, what was in the closet is going to come out of the closet. What was once done in secret is now going to be championed from the palace. And this happens, this, there's a special specific period, and it accelerates. All of a sudden, the, the pagan morality is going to overtake the, the Judeo-Christian or the biblical morality. That is this, it's going to accelerate. Now we have, have we, we are right now in that period. You had, we had, we were having this fall, but you had, remember you had the Reagan revolution where you had a kind of a call to come back. Well, once that was over, early 90s, comes this period where we have been accelerating and accelerating. For the first time, you have leaders from the White, from the palace or the White House. You have yeah. them championing this, where actually you have Christianity becoming a minority in, in the land. Well, well, there was a leader, there was a king in that time who was the pioneer king in this. He championed all these things, and his name was in Hebrew, Ahav, or Ahab. Ahab was, was now, now this is the paradigm of Ahab. Ahab comes at this time. He becomes the center of this culture war. He begins championing the worship of Baal from, not from the shadows, but from the palace. He is, he is kind of a weak-willed man. He comes from actually a culture that knew God, but he turns away from the values of God. He is, he is very emotional. You see him go in, in the story. He goes, he goes to extremes back and forth. He will be the first king to champion the, the, the sacrifice of children. He'll be the first king. He will marry outside of Israel. He'll marry a woman who comes from another set of values. And so he will, all these things will happen, and he will be leading this culture war that will lead to persecution. He will be the first king to start normalizing immorality because he's, he's, he's advancing Baal worship. So you have all these things. Now, could this have manifested in America? Well, who, if so, who is the Ahab? Who is, it's got to happen at the time of a culture war, at the time when this happens. Well, you know, the word culture war came into, the, into America, to talk, talk about this, in the early 90s. Within two months of the first mention of culture war, this man, a man rises to the, to the presidency. His name is Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was the first president in American history, just as Ahab was a pioneer, and it's not about the people, by the way. It's about, it's about where we are. We've got to pray for the people. But he was the first president to, to champion abortion, number one. First one. First one, just like Ahab was, mm. that, which, is, which is linked to Baal. He was the first president to wipe away every protection against abortion. The first thing he did as president is he wiped it away. E executive orders, first one in, in the history of America. He was the first uh, leader to champion immorality. To champ Actually, in his reign, just like with Ahab, sexual immorality comes into the public, the public arena. It start, the culture starts getting more and more vulgar. He's in, like, like Ahab, he is emotional. 
He's an emotional man. He goes back and forth. He is a compromise. What was Ahab? He was a compromise man. He knew, he knew of God, but he kept going back and forth. Well, that also too. Bill Clinton came from the Bible Belt. You know, he knew God, and he knew of God, and yet he turned against it, same thing, in the same way. Was of, and, and, and he became the, he opened the door, just like Ahab did, for everything that is happening right now. It's not about a person. So that's the first one, is the, is the paradigm of Ahab. And so now, now what happens with Ahab? He marries, he doesn't, he doesn't act alone. There's another one involved, and her name, and again, it's not about the people, and, and the people are just, it's not about their motives. It's, we don't, we're not judging that, and we, we have to pray for all people. There's no enemies, but it's w- the role they played in the nation's fall. The next one is a woman from Phoenicia, and she was a princess. Mm-hmm. Her name in the original was Isabel, and we know her as Jezebel. What was it about Jezebel? She was the daughter of the of the high priest of a pagan god, the daughter of the, of the priest of Ashtoreth, or Astart. So she grew up worshiping, she grew up with other values. She, now Phoenicia was not like Israel, it was a cosmopolitan place. They had cosmopolitan values. When she, she was married, she kind of married off, it was a political marriage, uh, and so she was married to Ahab as, as a political marriage, and she, in this marriage, she never adjusted, she never adopted to her new home, she saw Israel, she saw all the values, the biblical values as something backwards, something intolerant, deep-seated religious beliefs that had to be changed. So she made it her agenda that she's going to change the nation. She's going to introduce Baal worship. She's going she's to she's encourage her husband to, to introduce that, which means she became the chief advocate of child sacrifice in Israel. She becomes the advocate. So now, now, is there a parallel? Well, we have, we have a parallel here. We have what happened in the 1990s is for the first time, by the way, it, Jezebel and Ahab become the first, they become the first team in Israel's history. First time you have a king and a queen, in a sense, on the throne, both ruling, both doing it. Well, for the first time in American history, we had the same thing. We had, it was called a co-presidency. We had Bill Clinton, and then we had Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton came from a cosmopolitan background. She didn't come from the Bible Belt. She came from, a, she came from Chicago. She had a cosmopolitan values. When she moved to marry Bill Clinton in the, the Bible Belt, she was always seen as someone with other values, that she was never at home with these things. Uh, uh, Jezebel, she worshipped this god, the goddess called Astarte or Ashtora. She worshipped female power female power. She usurped, she usurped her husband very often, and, she, and in a sense, you could say she was an early version of radical feminism. And so, do we have a parallel here? Same thing. And in fact, Jezebel is seen as a hero of feminists. Some feminists will speak about Jezebel as the first feminist. So she, she, what she does is she usurps, she incites, the Bible says she incited her husband. So she, she does this. When Bill Clinton wiped away every protection against abortion, it was Hillary Clinton who said, you have to do this. She was the one who made that happen. She also, she also has spoken many times, like as Jezebel said, that, that she said, deep, the, the quote of Hillary Clinton was, deep-seated religious beliefs must be changed. Her agenda was, we must change it. She saw the Bible, she saw these things as obstacles, and she has become the chief advocate of the offering up of children, this is the modern version of Jezebel, I'm saying of the actions, the, she became the chief advocate of abortion in the history of America. She was honored recently by Planned Parenthood as the champion of the century, not of the, not of the year or the decade, but the greatest champion. Well, this is, and, and again, it's not that she knows what she's doing, but in the same way as Jezebel had a court, had her own court in the palace, well, Hillary Clinton was the first first lady in history to have her own court, her own wing, her own part of the West Wing, and they ruled together. They influence together. So you have this team going on. Now, what about the exact timing of this, of these things? Could the paradigm actually give us the exact years and timing when all these things were to happen? This is the collector edition. And uh, what we're doing is if you order now, you get the book, Yes. but you get the video yes. of the whole book as well. More than and that. Your teaching and all this stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's this. Co- the two 
two sets. It's it's album, album one and album two. It's the, called the Paradigm Uncensored. Now this has things that could not even come into the book. Really? This has things that are nowhere else on earth because it's either too explosive or we just couldn't put it in. Really? This has this has, that's why it's called the Paradigm Uncensored. It oh. has it's me sharing. I mean I'm it's it's eight DVDs and I'm 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 unfolding the mystery, but there are things that you will not hear and cannot hear anywhere else. It's it's the thing behind There's everything else. The as book, well as the full revelation. Okay, so the book and two sets so two of sets the video and the book. all related to the book. All this new information for a sixty-five dollar gift. And you get the the uh, DVDs, of course, are in each set. You get the two sets, and they're they're amazing. This is a hundred and eighty-two dollar value. That you, if you went down to a bookstore, if there's any left, you would you you know it would cost a hundred and eighty-two dollars. But we're we're giving all of it, the whole set. Most people do one video set for sixty-five dollars. Right. This for sixty-five dollars, you get the hardback book. The the paradigm yes. and the two sets wow. with the secrets wow. in it. Right. Yes. Stuff that you, it's, that it's, that's why it's called too hot for the book. <laughs> it's, it's too hot for anything. You know, for, for, but they're there. They're in this now. And this is powerful stuff. This is where we are and it's biblically where we are. Yes. Do you understand that? Yes. This is what you need to know. It doesn't make any difference what I think. It makes a difference what God thinks. That's right. why I love Rabbi's teaching yes. from the Old and New Testament Amen. of where we live. Yeah. So let's go on. Yeah, let me let me let me let me hold off on a second of the timing for a moment. I'll get back to okay. that. I promise okay. you. There's a chapter called the Days of the King, and that's where that will open that up. But let me say something. There's there's another chapter called the Goddess. Now let me. This is kind of heavy. This and I had no idea of this when I first came. When this was coming to me, I had no idea. What does the Bible say about Jezebel? It says that she brought. She brought priests into the palace, the priests of Asherah. Okay, now Asherah is, a, is, is basically the mother goddess. Now, the, you had Baal, and then you had the, the Phoenician goddess called Asherah, or, or also sometimes known as Astart or Ashtoreth, which is the Bible says, it speaks a lot about Baal and Ashtoreth. They were actually husband and wife. And they would offer up their children to both, God, both the god and the goddesses. So she brings in these priests of the goddess into the palace. And it says they're there at, Je at Jezebel's table. Elijah condemns her for this. Okay. Could something like this have ever, ha could this have happened in America? I and mean, this seemed crazy. Could there have been something that happened that it would have to be in the, in the White House because you have the palace would correspond to the White House. Could this have happened in the Clinton years? Anything linked to the goddess? Now here's, here's what I discovered. Okay. And here's what's in here. During the Clinton years, the the president, the Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, invited m ministers or or certain people to the White House or to Camp David first, and then the White House. But they were there was nobody who was a biblical minister. They were they were they, they what there was there among them were New Age ministers, mm. and they they invite them to Camp David, and then. Hillary Clinton, it says in the paradigm, the, the, in a sense, the first lady of Israel here, the first lady will bring priests of the goddess into the palace. Well, she brings, she brings them, a few of them, to the White House. And, it, in, and she has sessions with them. And, and what the sessions were, and this went into the news, but it got, it got they didn't realize what happened. They, they said, oh, these are seances in the White House. Well, they denied it. Said, no, no, it's not seances. These are brainstorming. It wasn't brainstorming. Brainstorming is when you talk about ideas. What it was, the, first of all, the person, the minister, quote, minister was there is called a New Age guru. Her name was Jean Houston. And she is, she is also called, she wrote a book where she's called a high priestess of the New Age. And so she was there ministering. And what she did, what they did, they had these sessions where basically they were channeling. And in, you know, in, the, worship of, in the worship of Ashtoreth, Jezebel's, you know, all that, we have evidence from the Bible and beyond that, that it involved conjuring the dead. It involved speaking to the dead. It involved channeling spirits, for talking to familiar spirits. In, in the book, it goes through all that. That's actually the biblical words. And so the worship, so could that have happened in the White House? It actually did happen in the White House. They, she led in these sessions, this priestess, and she had the first lady actually channeling 
a dead person, which was Eleanor Roosevelt, speaking as Eleanor Roosevelt. Yeah. And they, again, they tried to do damage control. But, but the fact is, at the, as I looked at this, I found that this woman, who was the priestess, she wrote a book at the same time. And the book that she wrote, she writes about the sessions. And she, what she says is, well, you're speaking, when you're doing this, you're speaking to the, quote, she calls them netters. And netters means the gods. She said, one of the things says you are dialoguing with the gods and goddesses. That, so that's what happened at the White House, just as in the paradigm. And because that's what they did. They communed with the gods and goddesses. And also, it says you are also speaking to the departed. You're speaking to the dead, which the Bible says never do. That's in the paradigm. That's what Jezebel did. That's what happened in the White House. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but the woman was wearing on her necklace, the, the, was wearing a, a necklace of a goddess, of an ancient pagan goddess when she did this. And, it, and she wrote the book. The book that she wrote at the same time was all about the, was calling people to worship a goddess. That was the book that she wrote at the time that she was doing these sessions with the first lady in the White House. This was the first lady's counselor. And so not only that, but she, when she talks, she talks about the goddess Isis. Well, in the myth that she, she speaks about in the book, she, she brings it to the land of Phoenicia. Phoenicia was the land of Jezebel. So now this woman who is into the worshiping the goddesses is speaking about Jezebel's land, and then she speaks about Astarte, the goddess of Jezebel. She literally writes a book that is speaking about Jezebel's god, and she was the one who was doing this in the White House. So oh. this all took place, and this is kind of the, the one of the things about the paradigm. It also speaks about secret things that yes. were done in ancient times that are being done in modern times. So even that was fulfilled in that this is what was happening in our White House, in the palace, the same thing. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this special message. God is shaking America. That monster hurricane, the strongest ever on record in the Atlantic Ocean. In St. Martin, the government says 95% of the island is destroyed. Buildings shredded. When all these events take place at the same time, people, who's going to cook the food? Who's going to bake the food? There's not enough people to help. There's not enough people to feed all the people. But I want people to be ready. Here's the thing, what I found out. This food is more precious than gold. It really is. This food, listen to me. People will die if you don't feed them. That's right. So what, what do we do? We all get in. Pastors from everywhere are coming. Churches from everywhere are coming. They We're really all coming are. together. We're all working together to make a miracle happen. Yes. And it's happening. God's people coming together. What is going to do with the new hurricane mm -hmm. what what are we going to do with the one after that and i want to tell you something when all these events take place at the same time people but i want people to be ready if, if you could start with one bucket it's not about buying food it's about being this is gold when these people found out there's pizza in these buckets there is every kind of food you can think of in these buckets. Honey wheat bread. You can make a bread out of this. The bean burger. You can have your own burgers. Cheese pizza. Creamy stroganoff. Fettuccine Alfredo. This is deluxe. For $175, would you buy a four-month insurance to stay alive if a storm hit? Yeah. If a flood hit? <laughs> Here's the thing. If a flood comes in that house, it ruins your refrigerator it ruins your stove it ruins everything there this it's as good a food as you're going to find ever and it is the italian marinara is so good it's like your italian grandmother made if you have one and macaroni and cheese you've got uh spanish rice and we have cheesy broccoli rice we have white rice. We have instant potatoes. We have, that's mashed potatoes, by the way. Hearty vegetable chicken soup. Creamy potato soup, thick as it can be. And then morning mousse milk. Where can you get a bucket of food that will last up to 30 years? You don't have to refrigerate it. This is a refrigerator and a freezer. That's it. It's a storage room that you can stay alive with in the next month, in the next two months. 
When you start seeing this as a refrigerator, you will understand that it's not just a bucket. If you have a flood at your house, what if you have an earthquake? You said it in the plane. It's going to be a church that can be prepared, a church that can have a plan. The Bible says that without vision, the people will perish. The church had a vision to prepare the moment they heard that rain was coming. I want every home yes. that's watching today to get at least one bucket of food. This is four months of food here. And this is the deluxe. This is the deluxe. This this is chocolate pudding even and the morning mel- mousse milk and uh, the, the amazing milk. Where else can you get milk that will survive this long? And the, your breakfast is here is the maple brown sugar oatmeal. And then buttermilk pancakes are is in here. And if this regularly retails around $175, but if you give $175, you have four months of food for $175. And we're going to send the staying alive bucket to the, where the hurricanes are. So look, it can be either Houston or we, we're even planning for Irma right now. If you order this, buck, this bucket for $175, this one goes as a bonus to the flood zones. This is seven years of food right there. That's right. And this is all this food that I made with pa- pizza, pancakes, all the great foods, the Italian food, it's, and just add water and eat, you know. And that is seven years. For how much money is seven years? Well, you can order this today for $3,700. Now, that has a value of $10,976. So today you'd be saving yourself $7,276. And we're adding, we're adding two years of bonus of food. Yeah, originally That's right. the, the time of trouble was seven years, but this is actually 10,472 servings, which comes out to be nine years and eight months worth of food. That's the two year, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. This is, is a year for two for one thousand two hundred dollars, and that is two thousand nine hundred ninety-two servings. So that's two years of food. Mm-hmm. Well, it's actually over thirty-three months of food. Yeah, they're all bonuses. So yeah, they're, there's, there's they're, so many bonuses when there's more. Mm-hmm. So one year of food there, John. That's right. This is one year for six hundred and fifty. You get four buckets with that. That is a total of one thousand four hundred ninety-six servings that you can have for for $650. Call now. 1-888-988-1588. You can also write Jim at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Or you can order this offer and many others online at jimbakershow.com. Thank you for your prayers and financial support. It's because of you we can continue to broadcast the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. You're seeing this is supernatural spirits going on, people. You, you're telling it. You're unveiling yeah. what we're fighting. Yeah. It, it's, why this war is so crazy, people. Why this is insanity that's going on. It's a warfare of evil and good. Yeah, it's it's ultimately it's spiritual. I mean, you cannot you cannot be championing the killing of children and not have a spiritual oh. element. And again, not that any of these people realize this, but it's there. And it and it's, in fact, you can look at you can look at one point when they're talking about Jezebel and they speak about there there are Hebrew words. They speak about the worship. Uh, they speak about a king who followed Ahab's worship, and they use all these words: conjurer, you know, which is basically channeling, speaking with the dead, all those things. But it actually happened. It actually it didn't have that. It happened. And so now let's go to the next part. Next part. And I had no, when I was speaking, when I was here the last time, I had no idea of this. This it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now here's a, now here's another part. The, the the paradigm is so specific that it gets it's going to get it's going to get eerily into dates. But okay, we talked about what were the days of the king, the days of Bill Clinton. Now 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 presidents cannot can only be there for four years or eight years, but a president can be on. They usually are on the national stage for a good amount of time. Unlike the kings of Israel. The guy, how do you become a king is basically the guy before you dies and you become a king until you die you know but but how long are you, how long was the, how long was bill clinton on the on the national stage it begins 1979 he is sworn in as governor of arkansas from governor of arkansas he's going to go right from that place to the presidency of america when does it happen 1979 when does it when does it end his president he ends he leaves the national stage as as in power leaves in 2001 in january it's the end of his so so 
Mondo. I mean, I just wrote this out before so you could see for yourself. But if you subtract 2001, subtract 1979, how many years are the years of Bill Clinton? 22. 22 years. Okay. Can you open up your Bible if you have a Bible here? If you know, yeah, if you open up your Bible to 1 Kings 16 and verse 29, and it's going to talk, it's going to introduce this character. In the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Omri, began to reign over Israel, and Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria 22 years. Oh. 22 my, years. My. So the paradigm, the years of, the, of Ahab determined the years of Bill Clinton. Ahab was on the national stage of Israel for 22 years. Bill Clinton was on the national stage of America 22 years. Oh. It, it's determined by that. It's not like, and you're going to find this with, with every king, every leader is going to follow the pattern yeah. of that, starting yeah. with Bill Clinton. Now here's, and, and it's a, cra a crazy thing because, you know, with, 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 and it's, it's telling you, you know, we're talking about all these things. It's telling you that God is in control because nobody could orchestrate this. Because, you know, what they have is because basically his father died and then he got killed. And so that big 22 years, 22 years. With Bill Clinton, it had to do, it was election and back and back, going back and forth. But it ends up with the same exact time period, the same exact time period. And so now, all right, here's the next part. This is something I had no idea of when I f was first coming to me when, when I was here. In the time of, of the, the Ahab of the template, the Ahab of Jezebel, during that time, a nemesis, an enemy, rises up against Israel. Now, there's a chapter here in the, in the paradigm called the nemesis. He's an arch enemy. He's going to, in the latter years of Ahab, he becomes an increasingly, increasing threat and danger to the nation. He will issue threats of destruction against the nation. He will come from the east of the nation. He comes from a Semitic land. He is actually Semitic. That doesn't mean just Jewish, but Semitic is other things, is Middle Eastern. He issues threats in a Semitic tongue. At one point, God will actually deliver this arch enemy of Israel, will deliver him into the hands of Ahab, but Ahab will let him go, release him, even though, even though the danger that he's going to cause, and he's at, because he releases him, God, a, if you read, in the, in the, God actually rebukes Ahab and says there's going to be judgment now. He releases the one that Ahab, that God gave, put in his hands, this nemesis, this enemy, arch enemy, and that arch enemy is then going to bring disaster on the land in later days. Mm -hmm. Now, now, question, paradigm now. The paradigm says that in the days of the, now would be the Clinton years, there will rise an enemy who will be an active, an, an, an arch enemy of America. He will threaten it. Did anybody arise at that time? His name is Osama Ooh. bin Laden. Oh. oh my. He arises at the time. It's like, as this one arose at the time of the Ahab, this one arises as Clinton. In fact, he comes on the world stage as a, as a terrorist. First act happens within 30 days of Bill Clinton assuming the presidency. They come together happens together. And, it, and the paradigm says, in the latter years of the reign of this Ahab, this, this one will become an increasing danger. Well, that's exactly what happened. That's when was, we started first hearing about bin Laden, first time. It was in the latter years, it was in the latter 90s, the latter years of Bill Clinton. The, the nemesis, according to the paradigm, will come from the east of the nation, so, so Osama bin Laden. He will come from the Middle East. He will be Semitic. Well, well Osama bin Laden, he's, he was Arab. That's Semitic. He will, he will speak Arabic, which is a Semitic tongue, the same as then. He will, offer, he will issue threats of destruction against the nation. Well, that's exactly what Osama bin Laden did. He issued threats first before it happened. But could it even be that the paradigm here, this is, again, in the chapter called the Nemesis, could it actually give... The parameters of his name, of his name. Okay, now let me let me tell you who was this ancient nemesis. The ancient nemesis was named Ben Hadad. You can you'll find it in the Bible. Ben Hadad. First thing about his name, he has eight letters in his name. Ben Laden, Ben Laden. Eight letters in his name. First part of, of the of the nemesis are three letters, and then five letters. So ben, so Ben Laden, three letters, five letters. But not the first, but here's the thing, the first part of this, this nem ancient nemesis in the paradigm, it begins with a letter, it's letter B and the letter N. It's been, it, in, in Hebrew or Arabic, there's no vowel, it's bin. Uh -huh. It's bin. Osama bin Laden will be named bin. It's bin Laden. In fact, bin and ben are the same exact word in the Middle East. In fact, bin Laden is called ben Laden in, in other languages. It's the same thing in Arabic. 
So according to the paradigm, it has a, a meaning too. The nemesis, the first part of his name will mean son. And the first, mm. part, ben, and the first part of Ben Laden's name means son. Same thing, as ben, exactly the same as the ancient nemesis. For, it's basically the same thing. Now, here's something else. According to the paradigm, the king will have the chance to eliminate him, but will pass on that chance. And it will bring destruction to the nation later on. Could that have happened? Well, the 9-11 panel found out that President Clinton and his administration had the chance to eliminate bin Laden, and they decided to pass on it. They actually ha it happened nine times. Nine times they what? passed on oh. the chance. You can check it out. Nine times they passed on it. In fact, Ahab, at one point, he's given a warning of what's going to happen, and actually, Bill Clinton was given a warning in, w in one particular month. It said that there's an attack being planned, that they will hijack planes, and it will involve terrorism. This is in the late 1990s. In that same month, he had the chance to take out bin Laden, and he did not. So according to the paradigm, after his presidency, it actually, it's after bin Laden, after this, later on, is gonna, the, the nemesis is going to attack the land and bring destruction on the land. It's exactly as in the paradigm. Exactly. Isn't this amazing? Yes. Isn't, isn't this amazing work? And I, I want people to be sure to order before the show's gone. Yeah. Oh, and want, get the, the, the book and two the two video. video this is uncensored. DVDs. Uns uncensored. This is the uncensored. Stuff. And believe me, this is Paradise. the high points. I mean, little points. Yeah. And then. And, he, and stuff he, he won't yeah. say on TV. Right. Because he's shy. But it's on DVD, but, uncensored, and it. But you to get the, the whole book. set. Yes. Do we have a baker's dozen on this week? But just give these out. When you, if you can't preach like Rabbi, if you can't do it as good as he did, you can take the book and give it. And then the videos come with it, too. So you've got a, a whole set. Uh, the, but the Baker's Dozen, just for the books, is what? Is the Baker's Dozen, you get nine books. You get four for free. It's $180. Oh, it's $180 for, that's 13 Baker's books. Dozen. books. Mm -hmm. That's 13 books, yes. a Baker's Dozen. This is what Lori and I, we, we love your books. Yes. I think Lori's favorite book of all time <laughs> Is a mystery. The, that, yeah. That's one you can cuddle up with. I do. I, do. <laughs> I love that. It, that's right next to yeah. That's with oh, my yeah. Bible, but it, on my nightstand. It my teaches Bible, you every day, Lori. Oh, yes. I love it. I love it. I <laughs> just can't you. get enough of it. And uh, so, I would call 1 888 988 158 is toll free. That's right. And uh, you can get that's $180 for Baker's Dozen. Yes, we true. always we give them to our, especially rabbi stuff we give to the more intellectual like you all are here today no i'm serious they are i we do we give them to our dentists and our doctors oh we do and they i can't wait they love reading your stuff that really is great so put them in the trunk of your car or in your front if you got a pocket or something to put them in the three is the best deal i think you just can call or go to the website you can order on the website if you want it's easy just go to jimbakershow.com or call right now, 1-888-988-1588. You know, I know enough about the Bible that sometimes I don't understand it all, but I love to have the unveiling, which is the best, the, what, yeah. what Revelation means, yeah. actually, yeah. unveiling, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, okay. and the Lord is never finished. He, you know, there's, there's no end to, to the mysteries of God no, because is. there's no yeah. end to God no. you know, when, you, yeah. when you open that up. I was just speaking to someone who was dealing with the media, he from here. Mm -hmm. um, and she was saying that, that you know, it, it's, it's harder now because the media, it, it's less and less Christian, you know, and there's less and less outlets because things are ending and things. And I said, you know, I think, I think because of the culture, I think, but I think that the, the Lord therefore wants the light to be more radical. I think that's why these things come out. And I'm, my, my prayer is that this reaches the unsaved too. You know, I'm having, this is my crying period, I guess, but <laughs> I am so moved by our president asking for prayer. Laura and I have been to the White House, but we've, we've been on the phone with the White House. We get to, we're, on, we're on the president's mailing list. And, and, but the president is always asking for prayer, Rabbi. Yeah. Yes. And he's been, God has surrounded him with believers. Yes. Total believers. Yes. I, I mean, uh, Billy Graham's daughter was there with us. And Graham's The head of the yeah. Assemblies of God. George the, Wood. The, you know, and 
I, I, I shouldn't have started naming names, but, but he's not a respecter of preachers. <laughs> he, he loves us all, and he loves prayer. Yes. And uh, someday I'm going to reveal, maybe, some of the things he said about me. And, it, and it's shocking. Yes. But you know, the number one thing he, he said he liked about me and the reason, you know, he watches me still, but he said he knew I had a, something happened in my life that knocked mm -hmm. me down. Mm -hmm. He said, but you know what I like about Jim Bigger? And he told one of my dear friends, he said, he got back up. Mm. Yeah. He said, that's why he got yeah. back up. And yeah. for a man to recognize that, yes. even the Bible says good men fall down. Yes. And get back up again. Come on, preacher. I want to get the video. You need to hear this, and you need to uh, see and hear the video. There you go. Th this, this is a DVD set, two sets, set one and set two. That's right. And the hardback book. Beautiful yes. book. And so many don't even print hardback books anymore. No, that's oh. right. Uh, Lori and I are library people. I did. Guess what? I have. You got a signed one. Guess what, though? From Rabbi. Did you get it? <laughs> Guess what, though? What? It's the first one he signed to anybody. Of any book. Wow. It's true. Whoa. True. What do you? You got the first one of the Harbinger. The, fir the first. The first Harbinger I ever signed in the world was to Lori. Yes. And the first book I ever signed in my life was right. to Lori. Right. And now why you? She always gets right in there. This man is brilliant. <laughs> But he said, how do you sign a book? What do you do? <laughs> he asked Lori that. Isn't that right? <laughs> I needed help. Yeah. <laughs> but but he, he, he wasn't a book signer before. He didn't sign people's books. So, and so I'm while you were over there, Lori came over and said, could you sign this book? And you got in right there. I, I said, did. I said, it's I think this is the first me. one I've ever signed. And it was. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Rabbi. And so, uh, I love in a few that. minutes, we're going to have a book signing here because we want to kick this thing off with you lovely people. Yes. You all came here and put up with me today. Yes. Thank you so much. You're, you're an amazing yes. audience. Thank you. Yes. But so the, the, these three, the two videos, sets, sets. Yes. <laughs> and the, the, the beautiful, I love books. I do too. Uh, someday I'll show you my library. In back. I, I'm just praying this will be a bestseller. Yes. I, 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 I pray today. I'm just going to believe God. You all out there, could you help me? Everybody order one of them. I want this to be the biggest day ever in any book you've ever had. Wow. In any one day, I'd like to be the opening day on this thing. I'd like to have literally thousands and thousands and thousands of Let's books go today. Now, of course, and this book is going to shake America. Now, this, you may get controversial. Jim, if you can't do the Paradigm Bundle, go ahead and at least just get the book. It's just a gift for $20. Everybody um, do something to, and it help us to stay on the because air, too. you can get into it. You can underline it. You can highlight it. You can read it. You can read it over and over, but get it inside of you, and you'll have answers. It's, it's, your, it's your ministry book to pass out, so get 13 of them, too. Baker's Dozen. Yes. So what was that number on Baker's Dozen again? It's $180, $180 for 13 bucks, which is a baker's dozen. That's right. And those are hardback books. Get your Christmas now. That wouldn't hurt. And then we'll, we'll, we'll have our biggest day in history of Rabbi's books. And we want to encourage this young man. He's just getting started <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, baker's dozen. You actually started as a, you're, you were called a boy or something, the two young boys or something. Oh, two on the nice, radio? On the radio oh, show. Nice. Somebody asked me to come on the other, the two nice Jewish boys. Yeah, that was Two nice show. Jewish boys. Yes. Years yeah, ago. I love that name. That was a great but, show. <laughs> you remember? Yeah. Really? Well, I've been Baker's watching that on YouTube. Really? Dozen great. For $180. Yes, and then we also have a What's three that? for two. Oh, Sue, yeah. I didn't know that. Yes, we S do, Jim. Say that again, <laughs> Sue. We have three for two, and that's for a $40 donation to the ministry. So if you, you oh, get... that's a great... That's yeah. Great. You get instead of so you a $20 book, you get two $20 books, and that's cheaper than the retail, actually. That's you get two right. $20 books, and you get a free one. Yes. So what do we call that? Just three for two? Three for two. <laughs> <laughs> three for two. <laughs> Come on. I didn't mean to push no. books today, but... I am good. so great, excited great about this deal. book. I'll tell you what. 
Rabbi never disappoints. Never ceases to amaze. And, he uh, never disappoints. That you know, is the amazing. truth. We got we got a lot more wow. to teach this week, but yeah. One of the things I really want to talk about, because I hear people, they they say, well, the 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 uh, shemitah, the, the shemitah, or the harbinger, it hasn't come to pass. Well, the harbinger came to pass. We're in it. <laughs> we're in it. America, America has not turned around yet. Yes. You know, we are in it. I mean, it's so it's so much. The the shemitah. We had the biggest loss on the market in one of the things. I've forgotten what it was. Oh, yeah, it was the yeah, it was the worst year in Wall Street history since the other Shemitah. And these it. these people that yeah. don't know the Bible are mouthing off all the time. Come on, <laughs> I had one of them come to the show and stand up and shout out and be stupid. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be intimidated. No, no. I'm too old to be intimidated. <laughs> Come on, that's right. That's right. Okay, <laughs> we believe that, you know, and, they, and this man, he, he just was n naming off, well, these things didn't happen. Da, 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 da. Everything God's ever spoken to me has come to pass. It's mm -hmm. true. It is so true. I mean, you know, but, and everything, mm. you, you, you give minutes almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, your prophecies, and you're not your prophecy, but the, the word, God's prophecy, they come, to, you give us to the minute, people. Pretty amazing. And that's why we're in warfare. Mm -hmm. yes. This is, and what this book is, is going to reveal to you, the warfare that we are in. And I'm telling you, Christians, don't give in to this stuff. Come on. We've let the world con us. The power of the media and television and motion pictures has just influenced and influenced and, and the, the standard of, of the Christian America, and they've threatened it, so we're, we're afraid. I, I mean, I wanted to wear my hat, cross hat on the show today. My wife wouldn't let me. Oh, I didn't know you wanted your cross hat. You just said you were wearing a hat. Not, well, I, I that's all I ever hat. wear is my cross oh, hat. That's true. But, she said, "The rabbi's here. You got to be. You got to dress neat <laughs> for, okay. for the rabbi." Sorry, David. Oh, but I, David no, but I, I, no, <laughs> cross is fine. And you're talking. But about. I wear them out in public, and I know I could be shot. I know that. There are crazy people out there, but I'm not going to deny the cross. No. I will not deny the cross. Amen. I won't. Amen. Amen. I always say it's, it's, it's the bridge I cross to get to heaven. That's right. And I'm not going to blow up the cross. No. And uh, so forgive Paul, me. Paul, no, don't, don't, no. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power yeah. of God for salvation yeah. to everyone who believes. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. We have to be bolder. One of the things. Isn't that, do yeah, you believe we're going to have to stand up more and more, we're gonna, willing to give up our you know, lives? You've heard me say this, but it's absolutely true and it's still profound and simple that when the night comes, the dark gets darker, the lights have to become brighter, yes. have to become like radical. The last thing in the, the last two things I was led to put in the book yes. was one was things to come future. And the second thing was the Elijah paradigm. And that is what is the answer? How are you to live as believers in the times of the paradigm? You're, we're even in the paradigm. And that is that that there is there is the, the key of how to overcome for such a time as this, yeah. because that's the whole point. You know, we have to be more radical. We have to. We have to. You know, God is looking. You know, I once shared this here, and I actually put that in there. I shared about the times of Dave, the David age and the Elijah age. In the times of King David, you know, you know, the, the, the faith, biblical faith was on the throne, so you could be comfortable. But in the times of Elijah, it's the times where you must be radical. We've, we're no longer in the David stage. We're in the stage of Elijah, and we have to become the Elijahs of the day. Yes. That's the whole point. Right. That's the point of it. We have to become that radical, bold, uncompromised, all out, total, uh, on fire yes. for the Lord. This yes. is the days of Elijah. Yes. Amen. Yes. So now you have Jim Baker and, putting on his cross hat. Now, yeah. make, now look in the monitor. I had to, make, match, I had to match the rabbi's sure black. Is, <laughs> yeah, make sure that it's not crooked. No, it, it the, the days crooked. of Elijah. Tell me a little <laughs> no. more. Yeah. We, well, uh, uh, cause, listen, you got a few more minutes, don't you? We just, yes. Just wait. For yes. Just, I want you to say 
because people misunderstand, yeah, yeah. and we're we're in that day. Yeah. So yeah, what's going you know, on? You know, we sing these are the days these of Elijah, are, yeah, and it's, we all I, get I, happy. And, I love the song. Everybody gets happy, but yeah, they don't. They're not, and we should be happy, but we were not thinking about what that is. What are the days of Elijah? These. This is the days of Elijah. The paradigm is the days of Elijah. Days of Elijah were not days of easiness. The days of Elijah were the days of Ahab and Jezebel and a culture that once knew God but now has turned against God is now, in, now encroaching on religious liberty, is now, is now uh, the darkness is encroaching around. So what are the days of Elijah? Is you have to, the, the church has to move from being a comfortable people to be a prophetic people. Elijah is a prophet. That means we must be a prophetic people. You know, in the days of Elijah, you know, Elijah was not, was not comfortable. He was a revolutionary figure. So in days like this, we have to, we can't go, we can't be status quo anymore. The status quo is over. There's no, there's not a Christian status quo anymore. It's not like everything is, this is Christian. It's not. These are days where, where, where it's anti-Christian. Therefore, we must be not status quo. We must become more revolutionary the way the book of Acts was. You know, 